gauch dir Adler auder Gangi fram, um Skoda Skili, um Skikna Skili, fiat uvis der Aveta, quar uvine sitja a fleti firir. Geven dur helir, gesture inkomen, quar ska sitja sjå. Jök er bráður, sá er að bröndum skal síns um fresta frama.
14, 1980, John Duncan performed Blind Date at DTLA in Los Angeles. Duncan's piece was part of a two-month festival of performance art called Public Spirit, which played at different locations throughout the city and was one of the largest and most comprehensive festivals of performance ever held in the United States. Rumor was out surrounding the extreme nature of Duncan's newest work and, in many ways, what the audience saw and heard that night in the DTLA space lived up to expectation. Immediately, the performance art community was not only divided but polarized over what Duncan had dared. The magazine High Performance, which ran a special issue catalog documenting the Public Spirit Festival, refused to carry documentation of the piece. Instead, the editor printed the following. John Duncan performed twice in this festival. His other piece is not included in this catalog because I find it highly morally objectionable and do not wish to be responsible for publishing it. Rather than describe what occurred that May night, let us listen to John Duncan himself as he describes and performs for radio, Blind Date. Men are taught to respond to their own emotional pain with rage, a rage they often aim at themselves. Teaching men to react in this way is an obscene and sanctioned perversion. If you were a parent with a male child, you were partly to blame. I was very deeply in love. When I lost that love, I saw myself as a complete emotional failure, unable to return any kind of positive affection. I wanted to punish myself as thoroughly as I could. I decided to have a vasectomy, but that wasn't enough. I wanted my last potent seed to be spent in a dead body. I made arrangements to have sex with a cadaver. I was bodily thrown out of several sex shops before meeting a man who set me up with a mortician's assistant in a Mexican border town. The man took $10 in exchange for a phone number. One hour with the corpse would be $80 paid to the mortician's assistant. I was ordered not to take any pictures or film. I drove to the border town, rented a room, and called the phone number. About an hour later, the assistant came to my room. He drove to the mortuary at his insistence and showed me to a medium-sized workroom. He took the $80, shut the door, and left me alone. The corpse was a woman who I guessed to be in her mid-thirties, with no disfigurements, all limbs and head attached, lying on a table covered with white paper. What you're about to hear is the sound of my having sex with it. 